muddy water is best cleared by leaving it alone. One of my favourite quotes of all time, Alan Watts. So on today's podcast, we're talking about embracing nature's wisdom, overcoming stress, anxiety and consuming less. One of those things that I'm trying to learn to do and I think the world as a whole needs to do that. However, before we get there, for the last like two weeks, I've been working really hard on sorting out my website, sorting out the Stillness in the Storms website, the Inner Peace Meditations website, and bringing them all together so all of my podcasts and all of my things are more easily accessible. And I had to update the link in every single one of my podcasts. And I often think that I'm not delivering, I'm not doing a very good job and I miss weeks and things like that and I think I'm doing a terrible, terrible job and I was going through them last night and I've done 92 of them and I was going through and I was thinking, hey, some of these aren't bad actually, some of these are pretty good and just going through the titles and things like that, boy, it took the, I was listening to one of my favourite albums and I went through the whole album which is a brilliant album, by the way. I'll put the album title in the show notes. One of my favourite all-time albums, it really is. It's one of those albums that you just return to again and again and again. And I put on the album, and it took the whole album for me to just go and copy and paste. I was really hating the job at the beginning, but by the end, I was loving doing it. It's one of those things that you just don't want to do. And I thought, I'll tell you what, I'll be really productive. And I'll just do 10 each day for the next 10 days or so. But I got into it. After about doing 40, I was like, I'm really not liking this. And then 50, it's like, okay, I'll keep going. 60, I'll keep going. And by the end, I was like, this is really giving me some clarity. And it made me, it was almost like I needed to see what I had achieved. And I think, how often do we really go back and look at what we've achieved? I might do a podcast on that. Or be, that'd be a good idea. But I want to say thank you to many of you that have bought me a coffee, although I've changed it slightly. I'm always changing things. Us humans are always doing that, aren't we? So I've changed it to virtual hugs. I don't really drink a lot of coffee, so it didn't make sense to me, buy me a coffee, buy me a coffee, and treat me to a coffee. So I've changed it to virtual hugs. So I want to say thank you to Lucy and Carol and Dawn, Sarah, Senga, Jin, and someone, (laughs) someone, and V, all of you for treating me to a virtual hug. You guys, massive big hug. I hope you can feel it. I'm like squeezing you tight right now. You can feel my arms around you. Thank you, guys. It really makes a difference. My podcast has just gone to another level. So it does cost a lot more now to host it and all that. But that's good news. That's wonderful news because more and more people are listening to it. More and more people are getting benefits from it. And I get emails, people that I really make sense. And I'm not sure I make sense in my head, but I'm just getting my thoughts out there. And if it makes sense to you, brilliant. That's awesome. So. I've sorted the website, so I've told you about that. I've told you about my virtual hugs. I'm just going through some of my show notes in a minute. And now I'm going to get on with today's podcast. It's about consuming less and just learning from nature, really. So let's go through today's podcast. So in our modern world, consumption is often seen as a necessity. We consume food, we consume material goods, information, even nature we're consuming. And I'm fe- I'm finding my time now, literally when I'm reading and YouTube, and I'm just like, I want it all. I want more and more and more. I want to learn more. I'm learning to speak Cornish at the moment. I'm learning the Cornish history. And I just want more and more of it. But where do we strike a balance? Am I becoming more stressful because I'm trying to get more and more? And But this constant cycle of consumption it brings about so much stress and anxiety. 
And as the philosopher Alan Watts once said, muddy water is best cleared by leaving it alone. So too is our lives sometimes. They become a little clearer, they become a little more peaceful when we reduce the noise and just reducing that constant consumption. And I love this analogy of the muddy water, the simple fact you imagine a great big pond and you imagine we're just throwing stuff in it all the time. How about we just let it settle? What we know now, the knowledge that we know, the wisdom we got, the food that's in our belly, everything, in our, just, just for a moment, just go, that's enough. What if we have everything in this moment? What if it's just enough? What a wonderful thought. And beneath the surface of this hectic consumption, below all our stresses and anxieties and fears, there lies a deeper truth, a more profound, peaceful reality, often referred to in Buddhism as Buddha nature. This is our true self, and unclouded by worldly distractions and illusions. It's a sense of being just enough, just as we are, just in this moment. Oh, what a relief. <laughs> Doesn't it just like, oh, I don't have to do anything. I can just be now here. I don't have to consume anything. I don't have to push back on anything. Oh, you, you just want to take a deep breath and just let it all out, don't you? That's just that huge sigh of relief. You know, nature provides us with a countless examples of living in harmony without need to constant consumption. It's an ageless wisdom that we often forget. You know, just look, look at the parable of the Chinese farmer. That's one of my favorite ones. I'm just going to have to look it up a minute because I kind of know it, but I, I kind of often forget it. The Chinese farmer. This is the famous Zen story often recounted. And a Chinese farmer had a horse that ran away. And when his neighbors learned of it, they came to the farmer saying, such bad luck. The farmer replied, maybe. The next day, the horse returned with three wild horses. How wonderful, the neighbors explained. Maybe, the farmer replied. The following day, the farmer's son tried to ride one of the wild horses. He was thrown off and he broke his leg. The neighbors once again came, up, came to offer their sympathy for the farmer's misfortune. Maybe, answered the farmer. A day after, the military officials came to the village and drafted the young men into the army. Seeing that the son's leg had been broken, they passed him by. Neighbours congratulated the farmer and on his good luck this time. But the farmer said, maybe. And the lesson here is, you know, you don't know what is in store. You know, I don't know whether breaking my neck was a good or a bad thing. I don't know whether you know, being stuck in that traffic jam is a good or a bad thing. It might have saved me from an accident. It might make me late for my appointment. Who knows? And I think when we have a slightly more balanced view on it, it's just like, ah, oh, we can just relax a little. Stop rigidly trying to control everything. Does that make any sense? Just, just that controlling a little bit less makes things just so much easier. I have a genuine belief that we do have everything inside of us that we need. Was it Marcus Aurelius? Very little is needed to make a happy life. It is all within yourself, in a way of think in your way of thinking. Very little is needed to make people happy. It's all within yourself. Okay, I butchered that, but you, you know what I mean. You know, this perspective, coupled with consuming less, leads to a simpler, more peaceful life. You know, just uh, another Zen story, the empty cup. It teaches the same lesson. We must empty ourselves of preconceived notions. And, and the story goes, a university professor went to visit a Zen master. While the Zen master quietly served his tea, the professor talked about Zen the master poured the visitor's cup to the brim and then kept pouring. 
The professor watched him overflow in the cup until he could no longer restrain himself and he looked up and goes, the cup is full. No more will go in, the professor blurted. You are like this cup, the master replied. How can I show you Zen unless you first empty your cup? And it's just a really good illustration of we, we go around with such a full cup, such a full mind, such a full everything we need, and we're just trying to consume more. I was watching a TV program last night on TV, and they went into this house, and they emptied the house, and they put it into this huge hanger, and they put it all in item order and color order. Ah, oh, it's an OCD person's dream, this is. I love seeing it all laid out like this i just want my house laid out like that. i don't want to put it back in the house i just want all my socks laid out in color and size that's a dream for me i'm learning to not battle that because not all my carers and not everybody i have look after me has the same ocd as me so i'm learning to let that go it's, it's taking a long time but yeah i when i grew up i used to have all my tapes in color order I used to have all my CDs numbered in coloured order, which was great till I bought a new one. And I had to take all the little stickers off and put them all in there. And yeah, if you look at my house now, you would think I don't have OCD. But I, th I think we all do. We like order, don't we? Because order makes us feel comfortable. It makes us feel that we're in control of things if we have some kind of order. And I think this is where we like to, we choose what to consume. We choose what to put in the cup. But very often we're at the point now where society is filling our cup for us. Society is bombarding us with everything. You must learn this. You must consume this. You must try this. You must have this. And it's just, and I'm doing the same again. I'm filling your cup again with my thoughts and my beliefs. And, you know, what you need to do, you need to empty more. You need to do this. Oh, the irony. <laughs> <laughs> the the irony is not lost on me and i hope it's not lost on you just yeah turn off his podcast and just be but the problem is we won't we don't do it you know the the best thing is like meditation practices just taking out a little moment here and there you know Let's do, let's do a little meditation practice right now. I just warn you, if you're driving along in the car and all that, do it, but don't close your eyes or anything like that. And just, just take a breather. Let's connect with the Buddha nature. To feel a sense of being enough. And as you breathe in, just settle your mind. When I say settle your mind, I mean allow your mind to settle. And as you breathe out, let go of anything you need to consume. Any stress or anxiety. And you could repeat the mantra in your head. I am enough. I have enough. I am at peace with myself and nature. And see how quickly we can go from consuming to I am enough. I have enough. I am at peace with myself and nature. What a wonderful calmness. And we could do that anywhere. We could do it any time. Just keep your eyes open if you're doing something that needs your attention. <laughs> I'm not suggesting that, you, you know, you go into a meditative state. And that's a really important point, actually, because we often see meditation as, you know, chilling out, finding a nice quiet area where you won't be disturbed. That's not real meditation. Real meditation is when you're amongst people, when, when you've got negative people around you, when the world is going to pots, how can you stay in that meditative state at that point? How can you stay just above the true self? And this is the point, just above. If you are the true self, nothing's going to phase you. But you want to be just above, just where the compassion and the wisdom is where the material wisdom of the self starts to form an ego. But before the ego starts to consume more and want more and have that ego egoicness about it, before that, you want to stay at that point where you're just a wise self. We've all seen that Zen master sat at the end of the bar when there's that big bar fight going on and 
they're probably not Zen masters. They're part of, they're part of the movies, aren't they? They're told to act like this. But you've got that wise wisdom at the end of the bar and he's out drinking and everybody else is fighting. And right at the end, he just stands up, gives the barman a tip and walks out. You want to be that calm person. Didn't get involved. He had enough. He enjoyed his drink. So yeah, that's today's podcast. Just, you know, enough's enough. Stop consuming for a moment. Stop doing. Just take a breather. Just have this moment. And I started this podcast by telling you all the stuff I've been doing. Because we feel like we've got to get somewhere. My mind's just reminding me, you've got your new seat. It arrived today. It's been three months in the making. They lost it once. It come from Germany. Got to get that put on at the weekend. Got to do this. Got... Doesn't the mind just... Okay, I know. Thank you for the reminder. I've got this. So I'm going to leave you with the thought, you know, you are enough. You have enough. Then, fine, we're going to consume more. But just... In each given moment, just take a step back and enjoy what we have in each moment. And the more we do that, the more we go back to that moment, the more you'll find the happiness that you're searching for, the joy, the genuine nourishment, the genuine fulfillment that you'll find is already there. It's already right here. You cannot want to be happy and be happy. The fact that you go, I want to be happy, means you're already unhappy. You've already missed the mark. You cannot have two ways. We already are in a state of happiness. We're already in a state of enough. We already have everything in this moment. And just take a deep breath on that thought. You know, this is a pretty deep journey. You know, if you've come along in this podcast with me a little bit, Exploring the idea of reducing consumption to find our true selves. That would help us to overcome stress and anxiety. And you can always head over to Inner Peace Meditations, my other podcast. That would help you to reduce some of the stress and anxiety. <laughs> always plugging. Always more. Always is. That's why, that's what life is, isn't it? It's a real difficult thing. But I'm going to leave you with Zen Master Banky. Not sure if I pronounced that right. Abiding with the unperturbed mind is the same as the peace and bliss of the Buddhas. Let's all strive to live with this unperturbed mind, consuming less, embracing our own Buddha nature. Thank you for joining me today and Thank you for the virtual hugs. You guys are absolutely awesome. Hope you can feel some of my love for you. And love for all of you. I hope you apply some of these insights and I hope you find some stillness. That's all we need to do. Find those little bits and moments of stillness. And remember, you are enough. And in there, there's a deep wisdom waiting to be embraced. Until next time, you can head over to thankyoustephen.com to download the five simple practices and join my Inner Peace newsletter that I'm organising myself to actually start sending every week rather than about every three weeks. Take care. Love you guys. Bye. Bye.